Today's fabulous lesson is our boho cap. You can make it in any fabric. I've made it in denim, I've made it in linen, I've made it in polar fleece. And today, this one, I made in a variety of fabrics, all sharing that hound's tooth theme. So you can really use your imagination and have fun with this design. It's puffy on the top, so you can pull it down in the winter over your ears. It's got a nice broad visor that will keep the rain, the sun, and the snow off your face. So let's get started. Let's make some boho caps. Yes, it seems too good to be true, but all these hats were made from this one pattern. And that's a copy of the pattern that we sell on our website for a nominal charge just to cover digitizing. That's the lining and you can add the lining as an optional extra. The lining will help keep the hat up around your ears, but if you leave the lining out, you can have a nice cozy hat that comes down over your ears, which is handy in the winter. If you're making a summer version, then I would say use the lining. It won't make it hotter. It'll just keep it in a nice spot on your head. So the pattern is complicated on this one. Um, it's probably going to be one of our more challenging patterns that we're going to do and the most challenging for the caps. So the band is in two parts. That's the back where we're going to put some elastic and the top is eight pieces. The visor has quite a, a deep curve and the front part of the band is a curved piece as well, which helps to accentuate the boho look that the top brings to the whole project. So this is a pattern in inches and I will do it in centimeters next. If you want to watch the video, just skip ahead past the three minute mark. I never know where to put these pattern pieces. And I'm sorry, this one is quite complicated, so it's a little bit longer in the intro than most of my other videos. Now you should pause the video when you are working in either inches or centimeters to draft up these measurements. And this is our size medium, uh, which is the average lady's head size, which I am. 22 and a half inches in circumference or 57 and a half centimeters. And now we're going to start sewing. So I'll start with the top pieces. There's eight pieces and I'm going to sew them together in twos, right sides together with a three eighths of an inch or one centimeter seam. And I'll go back and forth at the front of the seam and at the top of the seam. So eight pieces becomes four, and then I'm going to, to sew those seams flat. So I'll have that double uh, needle looking top stitch on the front and back of my pieces, and I'll have flat rounded seams. And I would say that I'm sewing about a quarter of an inch away from the seam on either side of the seam. Enough to catch that raw edge underneath and to sew it flat. And take your time, do a nice neat job because this is going to be visible on the outside of your cap. Especially if you use a contrast color thread. Now I decided to make this denim hat in blue and black with black thread so that you could see better what I'm doing on the sewing machine. And this is a perfect example of a three season cap. 
It's nice eight ounce wash denim that I got from fabric.com. And it uh, would sail me through the spring, the summer and the fall. But since I'm in Canada, I'll need a fleece hat for the winter. Now I'm sewing the twos together. So I'm going to have two pieces with four, four sections. And I'll top stitch just like I did before. So every seam on the top of the hat is going to be top stitched. Including the one that I will do when I put the two fours together to have one cap top. And use a pin if that will help you line up the seam. And we're almost finished the top. Just gonna line them up at the bottom and at that center point. And just the top stitching to do afterwards. And then I have a finished cap top. Now I'm just going to notch the center front and the center back, which is going to help me when I place my visor onto the cap and with my elastic band as well. So I've traced the outline of the visor on a piece of extra firm stabilizer and I'm going to sew it to the back side of the top of my visor. So I'm going to put blue denim on the top of my visor and black underneath, black denim. So I've gone around the whole outline and now I'm going to put the right sides together for the denim and another piece of stabilizer behind the black and going along that long curve and still following my trace line and my sewing line now I'm going to sew all four layers together. And you can see with my hand, I'm sort of pulling it out as I go so that it stays nice and flat. Now I'm going to trim very close to that tracing line and that sewing line. And I'm going to sew another line, a seam about three eighths of an inch in and I'll use my handy dandy magnet measure guide. And I'm sewing this seam on the back side. Now I flipped it over. So if I lifted up that stabilizer, you'd see the back of the black denim. And that helps me just get rid of any sort of extra um, puffiness in, in the stabilizer. And I'm going to serge my outer curve, but if you don't have a serger, just do what I'm doing here and, and just uh, notch away at that curve. I've pressed it and now on the back side I'm sewing a top stitch that's about a half an inch in using my magnet to help me make a perfect a perfect line. I 
and it looks good. I'm going to now just sew it closed along that inside curve. And then I will trim away any of the extra fabric. Now I like to do it this way rather than cutting those pieces out perfectly at the beginning. And I'm going to tell you why in a second, as soon as I finish trimming this extra away. Even though I use a magnet a lot to keep my seams perfect, sometimes it doesn't work out perfectly well. And I folded my visor in half. I'm going to put a notch in the center, but I can also see if both sides are the same. And in this case, they aren't. There's a little bit of extra on the piece that's underneath, so I'm just gonna trim that away to make both uh, sides of my visor exactly the same. And that's why I like doing my visor sewing the way that I do. All right. Now I'm going to do the front band and there's two pieces to the front band and they both have stabilizer. No matter what fabric you, that you use, use a piece of stabilizer. I'm using the regular heavyweight Palin sew-in stabilizer. And I'm just gonna sew the stabilizer to the back of my of my denim. But I could have used fusible stabilizer here. For the purpose of not confusing you because you wouldn't use the iron on for fleece or any of the synthetic fabrics so always best to be safe and the sewing is not a it, it's not a big deal to sew it on all the way around with a stay stitch basically just close to the edge and now i'm going to do the second piece of the band So these two pieces are going to be on the outside of the visor. So it'll be like a visor sandwich. And this curve is what makes this hat a little bit more challenging and why I say that it's an intermediate sewing project. Because you really need to take your time when you're sewing these two curves, which are going in the opposite direction. Uh, together and I mean two curves meaning the curve on this band and the curve on the visor on the inside of the visor and To add a little bit of decoration to the hat at this point you could put a uh, a piece of ribbon in to hold a bow I'm using a piece of uh, stretchy lingerie elastic Just to give the hat a little bit of pizzazz you could sew on a narrow piece of vinyl or leather to make it look like a belt that Greek fisherman look comes to mind if you did that and a couple of buttons at each end So this piece that I've added the elastic to is going to be the outside band on my cap. And now is the tricky part. I'm sewing it to the inner curve of the visor, right sides together. So the piece with my elastic, which is the outside to the top of the visor, which is in the blue denim.
Now I'm going to pin this flock as best I can as I pin the other side of the band to the back of the visor or to the underside. So right sides together with now the black denim and I'm going to try and catch some of that band that's on the front so that that seam doesn't pucker or I don't get folds as I'm sewing all those layers through all those layers. And I'm pinning horizontally so and far down the uh, band so that I can leave the pins in place as I sew past them. Now, also, when you sew the visor onto the band, I, you can sort of start at the middle and work your way out at the beginning when you start with that first piece, just to see how much extra you have on each end. I find I have about at least one inch or two and a half centimeters that uh, the band goes beyond the outside edge of the visor. But once you do one, you'll get the hang of it and that hopefully this process will speed up a little bit. But for this first one, you just, you're just gonna take your time and get the feel for how you can do this and not have to rip it apart <laughs> and do it again, <laughs> which I have done lots in my life. Now at this point, you can give your visor a press if you'd like with your steam iron. And if you're working in fleece, just put a piece of cotton on top. And we're gonna work on the back of the band and it's a nice rectangle. And it's going to have an elastic inside. So we call this the band back and we also call it the elastic casing. The elastic I am using is one inch wide and it's seven inches long. So I'm going to sew right sides together, the two edges of my band to the two edges of my back band. And I'm going to sew the elastic on the inner part of that front band and it looks like I'm going to sew it in the direction of the front band, but what I'm going to be doing is folding it back over itself as it goes through the back band. And I think you're going to be able to see that better when I get to the point where I'm ready to close up the seam. But the elastic is sewn to the portion of the front band that's on the inside of the cap and as close as you can down to the bottom so that we have a, a bit of space at the top there for when we're closing up that seam and we're not gonna sew over the elastic when we go through that casing part. And there, I think you can see how the elastic folds over itself. And that it makes a comfortable fit when you do it that way. And you want to leave enough space at the top there where you're not going to have to worry about elastic so that when you do your top stitching or your stay stitching along the edge to close it up now, you're not going to catch any of the elastic. So the elastic will be able to stretch freely in that back portion of the band. Or if you prefer, we can call it the elastic casing. So I start at the front. Um, at that center of the visor and I work back towards the to the to the point where the back band is sewn onto the front band I guess that's the best way to describe it and then I turn it over and do the other side and then when I go to the where I am now I just keep going but that way I don't have any puckering at the front so it's nice and important that the front is nice and flat And there you go. Well, 
looking good. So the lining, the lining is cut as a large oval and you can see from our collection of hat blocks that we have as Milners that the hat industry knows that your head, if we were looking at your head from above, it would be in the shape of an oval. So it's important to have that lining in a bit of an oval shape and to have a front and back. So the top of the oval is going to be either the front or the back. And I'm going to use my gathering foot to reduce that outer edge to match the outer edge of the cap. And you sort of get a feel for how much to gather. I like to put my, my fingers behind the gathering foot to help gather more. And with gathering, you can sort of break the stitch along the way if you find that you've gathered too much once you try to fit it into the top of the cap. But have a notch at the top and the bottom of the lining and so you can match those notches to the ones that you cut in your cap. And because it's gathered too, if you haven't gathered it enough, you can just tuck under as you sew it into your cap. And you're gonna sew very close to the edge of the seam of your cap, to that outside raw edge, because we're gonna to have to sew all of it onto the visor band. So the first thing I do is I just find those notches in the lining and I match them to the, the notches that I cut in the top. And then I just sort of work around and uh, just pin in a couple of places or clip. Now this is an optional step. I like to line my cotton hats um, but if you find that hats are hot and you're making this for yourself, um, the lining actually offers another layer of sun protection, but by all means you can leave the lining out, especially since you've top stitched. And now I'm going to put my regular presser foot back on. And I like to work with the lining down against my feed plate. It's just easier to sew through all those gathers and ruffles. And I'll just work it in as I go. Now I like to center my section seam at the front of the cap so that the center of the visor is, is in the middle of one of those cap sections. But you'll see out in the cap industry that a uh, section seam is actually the center front of the cap. So you can decide whatever you like best. It's a personal choice. And if you were going to make the seam the center, then that would be pretty easy to determine the front and back at that beginning there when we cut those notches you'd just be be notching a seam so now i'm going to pin my right sides together and i'm going to match up the the notches and with a regular seam allowance of three eighths of an inch or one centimeter i'm going to sew all those pieces together And when I, I'm gonna start at the front in the middle of the visor again and go around to the point where the back of the band or the elastic casing meets the edge of that front curved piece. Then I turn it over and I come back in the other direction. And this time, as I come to the elasticized casing, I'm going to pull it out to meet the, the same dimension as the top of the cap. And 
I'm being careful not to catch any of the elastic. All right. Now, if you want to, you can finish with that serger to make a nice, neat finished seam, but you don't have to. And look, it's done. Oh, I love this hat. What's not to love, right? And the same pattern made all of these. So have fun with this pattern. And I can't wait to hear about your projects. Leave your comments below. Any questions as well. Like this video and please consider subscribing to the channel because we're just getting started. So until we see you again next week, have fun sewing. Thanks for watching. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha